Try this. Tell me when you're done. So I'm glad that you put in some numbers. That's very useful. Let's use the one atom at a time technique. Who should the number one be attached to? Two and six. Yeah, so this, um, this indicates we're forming a bond between the one and the six. Good. You could also have written that like this. It kind of depends sometimes on your uh, organic chemistry software that you're using, where the head of the arrow goes. Um, but in this case, this still meant forming a bond between the one and the six. Now, how many bonds will there be between the one and the two? One. There used to be two, but we're breaking one of them. We're not breaking both of them. We're only breaking one of them. And how many bonds will there be between the one and the six? One. Good. All right, who's going to be attached to the number six? We already got the one. How many bonds will there be between the six and the five? One. Because we're breaking one of these bonds. Of course, we're not counting the hidden hydrogens here. Who, uh, how many bonds, who will the number five be attached to? Um, to the four. All right, looks like you might have noticed a mistake. How many bonds will we have with the number four? One. All right, so I think maybe you originally had two bonds here. Um, but we're, there used to be zero bonds, and we're forming one bond. So now we should have one bond. All right. Now, what was it that you could have done that would have avoided that mistake, going more one atom at a time? Notice how very nitpicky and um, almost obsessive compulsive I am when I'm going through this. I've, I focus like a laser on one particular atom and list exactly what it's attached to before I go on to the next atom. And the reason I do that is because I've been burned so many times. Every time I try to do these quickly, I make a stupid mistake. So I've gotten to the point where I'm really paranoid about it, and I try to focus as intently as possible on each atom and list as precisely as possible exactly what is it attached to and exactly how many bonds it will have, because I found it's just so easy to make careless mistakes otherwise. And there's really a, it's a shame to lose points on these types of problems, because these are very doable um, to get all the credit. Okay, so there's really only one bond here, not two. So who should the four be attached to? Three. With how many bonds? One. Yeah, because we're breaking one of these bonds, and who should the three be attached to? with how many bonds? Two. Because there used to be one bond, and now we're forming another. See, this one you got right, so that was good. It was only here where you had too many bonds. So the key thing is, it's good that you're now using the, the numbering technique. The other thing is to very consciously go one atom at a time, and maybe do that twice, because it's easy to make a mistake the first time around. By the way, um, what about changing two charges? Well, this is the one case where we don't change any charges, because here we have a cycle of arrows. It seems like you already noticed that. Um, there is no initial tail and no final head, because every arrow is pointing to the tail of the next arrow. So when you have a cycle of arrows, you don't have to change any charges. So we don't have to change any charges in this case, because there's no initial tail or final head. Oh, why don't we try the questions from the exam? So. Using the curved arrows, suggesting the mechanism of the reaction, show the product or products obtained in each of the reactions below. Show all unshared doublets and charges of any. So they want you to show all the um, lone pairs and charges. Oh, I have to give you some arrows, don't I? So.
Okay, let's give that a shot. Tell me when you're finished. All right, that seemed like a good process. So you put in some numbers. Of course, again, these are not IEPAC numbers. They're just reference numbers. You want one atom at a time. This oxygen is connected to a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and now it's forming a new bond to a hydrogen. And you saw that it's losing one of its lone pairs. Carbon number one is losing the bond to hydrogen. It's still got the CH2. Now carbon, did you get this part right? Yeah, very good. Now carbon number one will be double bonded to carbon number two, which is bonded to carbon number three. There's only a single bond now to the oxygen, because we're breaking one of these. And I think you saw that this will go from one lone pair to two lone pairs, because it's gaining another lone pair. So you got all the bonds right, that's good. And very good, you thought about the charges, which many students would not. Here's the atom at the initial tail. It started neutral and it lost electrons, so it should be easy and obvious to see that this will have a positive charge, but many students forget that. Uh, and this started positive and it's gaining electrons, so it becomes neutral. Uh, these, there's no charges changing here because we're in the middle of the string of arrows. So here we have three arrows in a row, but it really shouldn't be that hard for us to deal with those if we just take our time and go one atom at a time. So that all seemed to work out uh, pretty good. Now, um, this is a little unusual because, like I said, after this first midterm, you're not going to be expected to usually draw lone pairs anymore. They're only drawing the lone pairs here um, as a kind of a thought exercise so that you really understand what's happening. But after the uh, midterm, when you draw mechanisms, you're usually not going to draw a lone pair except for this one. We would still draw this lone pair because we can't have a tail pointing directly at an atom. But after this first midterm, we wouldn't normally draw this lone pair because there's just no conventional need for it. But it's not wrong to put in the lone pairs, um, although it gives you more chances to, to lose points if you make a mistake. But for this problem, they wanted the lone pairs. So that was good. Uh, and did you check the net charge? Here we had a positive one net charge, and here we have a positive one net charge. That's a good double check. Uh, it's really important to think about the charges because that's one of the places that people tend to make the most mistakes. Uh, again, um, I don't really like the way they drew this arrow. I would draw this arrow like this. But uh, uh, it looks like the, the, uh, the organic chemistry uh, word processing software that they're using is putting some of the arrows between the atoms. So you just have to be able to deal with that. Good? All right, oh, one more. 